Next, to take us through the topic of developments in 5G technology and industry application, we have uh, Mr. Sander Vera, who is the Vice President of Product Management, Starhub. Over to you, Sander. Well, good afternoon. My name is Sander. I'm the Head of Product Management, Pre-Sales and Network Delivery at uh, Starhub, um, the Enterprise Business Group. Um, in, uh, in the telecommunications industry for about 22 years and we're through many technology shifts including the rollout of 4G. Uh, so I'm proud to be part of Starhub uh, as we're uh, here on the forefront of uh, 5G in the region. Um, I want to thank the IBF and SCS for the opportunity for us to present about how 5G and IoT can transform future connectivity in the logistics and transport industry and how it will aid trade finance. So uh, what I will be taking you through in the next 30 minutes, um, I'll talk about well, generally what 5G is, uh, the vision around 5G, the benefits, and some general use cases. I will then talk about um, the uh, barriers and challenges in the adoption of blockchain to digitize supply chains and how 5G can help. Uh, and then I will talk about the uh, wider applications of 5G and IoT, because it's, it's not just about blockchain as a technology itself or, or a single supply chain. It's really about the whole ecosystem that will be enabled by uh, 5G connectivity. So what is it when we talk about 5G? Well, 5G is the fifth generation of cellular technology. Um, it's designed to increase data throughput uh, and the density of wireless services while reducing latency. Uh, latency is an indicator of delay. Uh, and what this simply means is that the application or the device will be a lot more responsive to the user than uh, a similar application or device when connected to 4G. Uh, so 5G is expected to unlock uh, applications in a number of areas as indicated here on the slide. So, uh, a good example of, or logical example of where you may see 5G is around better mobile broadband. So um, this is not just the mobile broadband on your phones, but you can think of things such as mobile hotspots, as well as fixed wireless access, uh, which is deployed in a number of the areas in the region today, for example, in Australia and Korea. Um, so, uh, and it's effectively replacing fiber access uh, with um, mobile access. A uh, second area where you will see applications of 5G is in mission critical services uh, due to the nature of the network, uh, because it's ultra low latency capabilities, high reliability and strong security. You can expect applications in the automotive industry uh, around autonomous vehicles, uh, within robotics and within e-health. Uh, there's a number of trials that have made the news about remote surgery, which is a future option that can be enabled by 5G. And finally, where there's a lot of expectation is around the massive Internet of Things, right? Because of uh, there's some changes within the 5G characteristics, it's much better suited to cover these high density, um, uh, well, things like uh, factory yards or uh, uh, seaports or um, uh, other areas where you expect a lot of devices. So why then 4G? Because we already have, uh, well, why 5G? Because we already have 4G today. So if you compare 5G against 4G, um, there is significant improvements by the technology itself. And this is why analysts are so excited about this, right? This is why a lot of industry uh, trade magazines talk about 5G. And this is why in some countries, uh, people are shelling out billions of dollars to get licenses and to build out 5G networks, including us here in Singapore. Um, so the, er the areas where you see improvement are typically talked about in three areas. One is around throughput, with uh, throughput being about, well, under best circumstances, 10 times higher than what's theoretically possible on 4G. And areas around low latency, right, where you see uh, where the responsiveness of applications will be well, over 30 times better compared to similar application when done over 4G. Uh, and lastly, it's around the amount of devices that you can have within the uh, uh, within a square kilometer of a, a base station, uh, both indoor and outdoor. Right? So it allows for much greater density of uh, device deployments 
uh, which will lower costs uh, and will also make uh, 5G better suited for indoor deployments, such as in manufacturing halls. So a number of these uh, use cases are indicated here on the slide. Um, so uh, when you talk about things as better broadband, right? So I've already touched on the, the hotspots, uh, the impact it will have on industry and events, um, uh, the, the low latency, right? How it will enable certain things such as uh, autonomous vehicles, uh, platooning, drones, right? Effectively anything which is remote controlled and which, which needs to be responsive because you don't want your drone to crash into people, as an example, right? And, and the high density connectivity that is possible with 5G. Um, in, it, from a consumer perspective, uh, the, the benefits will be initially visible within the entertainment area, right? So in 4, 4G or 8K video streaming uh, applications such as virtual reality and gaming, uh, but over time, these benefits, because they're primarily geared towards more enterprise use cases or industrial use cases, you will see um, impact other parts of society as well. And this will be a gradual change as the technology becomes uh, more widely available. Uh, the cost of chipsets and devices goes down. And, uh, 5G gets embedded into more um, equipment, uh, computers, devices, robots, you name it. Uh, and ultimately, uh, this is how 5G over time will change society uh, in a similar way as 4G has done over the last decade or so. So, what is now the link between 5G and trade finance? Right, because, okay, um, so trade finance, as was pointed out by the previous presenter, uh, is still in many parts a manual process, right? And that's due to the nature of how trade flows. Um, so um, despite technology revolutions in the past, right? Uh, trade finance has been, uh, has continued to be largely manual. So why would this now change with blockchain and 5G? So this slide highlights a number of challenges that, that exist to digi digitally enable trade using blockchains, which are in four general areas. Um, so I will, I will not go into a lot of detail on this. Um, so um, challenges are around the lack of consensus and standards, right? So we talked about a standard that we're promoting here, uh, but there's gonna be competing standards. That's the nature of the, the world, right? So there's gonna be other trade blocks that may come up with their own standards. Um, the regulatory environment is very different in different parts of the world. So blockchains or digitized supply chains need to align with those areas. Uh, and finally, a central authority was called out. Um, so central authorities are important um, in case there is any um, threat uh, in terms of, could be to the reliability, could be somebody blocking uh, the digitized flow, could be cybersecurity threats. So authorities play a role here to make sure that if that happens, somebody acts up. So uh, with the, um, uh, the technology that we talked uh, about um, today around trade trust, uh, it takes great advantages to already address that. All right, so what I will focus on for the rest of the presentation is primarily around the difficulty of the technology adoption itself, right? How 5G will come in and play a role there. Okay, so there's many areas where uh, Technology adoption is hard, right? And where technology adoption is being held back, particularly in uh, the area of trade flows. And I've highlighted four, there's more. But these are four key ones. Um, so the first one talks about uh, the need to connect the physical and the digital, right? So up until today, there's effectively two technologies or ways of connecting people. Uh, one is through fiber. Right? It's like the, the broadband that you use at home, uh, which is very reliable and very good, high throughput, but you need a plug, right? So if you don't have a plug to plug it in, it's not going to work. Uh, and then the alternative is Wi-Fi, right? But Wi-Fi is prone to interference in dense settings. Uh, it's not well suited for an area like a shipyard where there's lots of metallic containers that block signals. Right, and it's also difficult to manage this. Uh, many of you remember due to the time when we still traveled and we all tried to check into the hotel guest Wi-Fi at once. 
So 5G, due to how the technology is designed and how it will be deployed, is expected to change a lot of this. But 5G will make uh, it easier to reach those uh, physical areas which are currently hard to reach uh, and to provide internet access there and to make things available such as RFI scanners uh, and other methods that we will need when we want to digitize trade. Now the second challenge that uh, typically occurs is around the performance, the security and the reliability. Right? These days trade flows very fast. Right? And in order to digitize those transactions, we, we need to be able to transact at scale without disruption. Uh, now technology aside, um, 5G, because of its, uh, the way it's designed to secure aspects of 5G and its ability to do private, ultra reliable, low latency, uh, as coverage extends over time, will provide more reliable and wider coverage than for example, uh, Wi-Fi deployments. But, and it's, a, it's an ecology, it's an ecosystem that will be enabled by 5G. Like, uh, um, I mean, here in Singapore, we have the benefit of wireless at SG, right? Um, which is um, in our context quite unique, but um, it's not without challenges as you probably know if you've used it before, right? If you're in an area where it's very busy, um, wireless tends not to rely, be that reliable. So again, with 5G, the expectation is that that performance will be much better. The third area is around the ability to store uh, and transmit data, uh, right? Blockchains, because they're, uh, they're a chain, they're connected. Uh, they require a lot of processing power. They require storage and they require connectivity. Um, now there's the ability to, to deploy this in cloud today, right? But clouds are not without flaws. Um, I mean, there's um, frequent news about, say, certain applications not being available, right? So if Netflix is not available in the US, it makes global news because, hey, a lot of people are not able to watch TV. So um, if we want to properly digitize trade, right, uh, we can't have a structure where a port suddenly grinds to a halt because your blockchain is not available. So uh, 5G with the ability to do local breakout and to do a mobile edge computing, which is literally putting your cloud um, in your yard, right? And making sure that uh, users have like secure direct access to that cloud. Um, give us the ability to bring blockchain applications close to frontline users, which ensures that transactions can be done reliably, fast and securely to make sure that we build a system that's able to support this. And lastly, 5G is a complementary technology to IoT and blockchain. And it's something that will provide incremental benefits around the entire system. Um, as 5G and IoT uh, next to that will penetrate so widely in the overall ecosystem, it will help lower the overall cost of adoption of the technology across the entire chain. Um, so, and this is needed if we want to scale blockchain-based supply chains uh, out of the limited POCs where we are today and make it into a truly global phenomenon. All right, so 5G is literally creating what you would call in the industry like the network effect. Um, it allows more users to connect, it lowers the cost to connect as there's more people joining the chain. And overall, uh, that will help it to propagate uh, uh, applications uh, such as blockchain to digitize train across the industry. So for a good application of that network effect, let's look at uh, ports where over 90% of our trade takes place today. Um, so uh, there's, there's multiple areas in ports where 5G uh, along with IoT uh, adds value. But the ability to track things inside ports, such as uh, containers, and analyze this data based on video streams, right, which are 5G enabled, um, allow um, analytics that help our ports operate more efficiently, such as applying uh, data to optimize container stacking to uh, speed up offloading uh, of ships. But many of our ports today are already a mixed environment 
uh, where man and machine collaborate. And that, uh, while creates opportunities, also creates risks, right? Because you don't want a remote controlled vehicle to accidentally back into a user right, or a worker. So this is where 5G, uh, because it's more responsive and reliable, is expected to bring benefits as well. Um, in terms of the ability to track things, uh, such as people, goods, and equipment, um, uh, the ability to, to, to do this effectively uh, requires networks, and this does require networks across entire, the entire port. But if you do this through a fiber network today, you're effectively limited to the physical proximity to the fiber. Uh, and that makes it hard because ports are dynamic environments and things shift around. Right? It's where goods flow. People move and equipment moves around. So uh, a wireless technology as 5G is better equipped to, uh, to, to handle that. Uh, and in doing so, uh, 5G uh, and IoT are expected over time to help reduce the cost of clearance and the movement of cargo in ports overall, uh, effectively speeding up the flow of trade. Um, and uh, therefore also help us digitize the operations within ports, right? such as a lot of the paper flows which we're talking about uh, when we talk about trade finance uh, related to transfer of title of ownership in ports or as they happen in ports or at sea. So the way to look at 5G, it's, it's really an ecosystem enabling technology. Once it reaches scale, and it will take some time for us to achieve scale, but uh, it will have a lot of systemic benefits that will indirectly uh, benefit trade finance by reducing trade finance risk and compliance cost. But these can be in practical applications such as enabling in vehicle tracking, right, to make sure that high value cargo actually reaches port. The ability to electronically register handoffs, right? Even without user interference, to scan things as they pass something and register that something has been seen, right? Which again, helps secure goods, and make sure that there's no duplication or loss, um, which helps prevent theft. Right, to help optimize port operations by enabling things such as drones and autonomous vehicles and other things with inside ports. Um, that uh, help the overall flow of tra trade. Uh, and by providing this end-to-end -end ability to digitize uh, important moments in trade flows, such as when uh, the title is transferred, right, or when goods are delivered. Right, so this is, it's this overall ecosystem effect, which is enabled by 5G, uh, that will bring benefit to the industry. And these benefits will extend to other areas in finance. Uh, 5G will play uh, a vital role in the overall digitization of finance, right? Uh, mobile connectivity will directly contribute uh, by allowing banks and other financial institutions to move transactions online, right? And real-time data from 5G devices and things will benefit in the detection uh, and uh, prevention of fraud and other areas within financial industry as well. 5G may also prove transformational for financial risk management or asset management. And this can be in the ability to track individuals, uh, right, such as an individual's health uh, and lifestyle. Uh, but also, it can be applied to assets, right, such as uh, a property is being constructed to monitor things such as fire, um, quality of construction, and environmental risks. Right? An example that you can think of in a port is sensors to detect things such as oil spills or um, sensors around land to make sure that certain level of pollution does not happen. And these things all rely on connectivity, uh, reliable, fast connectivity. And while in many cases, 4G today is good enough, uh, 5G over time, because the cost of the technology is lower, and the ultimate performance is better, will displace that and enable a lot of that. Also, um, there's a lot of changes that will, well, uh, there's the expectation that supply chains will change, right? Because recent affairs of the trade tensions between China and the US 
and COVID-19 have exposed the risks of us concentrating manufacturing in a limited number of areas. So um, as governments and, and companies try to diversify uh, and want to move away from these low cost areas, um, one way to achieve that is by building more smart factories, right? Relying more on robotics. Um, so and 5G indoor networks, because they're much better suited than say Wi-Fi or connected um, fiber connectivity, um, will help enable that by assisting, uh, well, enabling assisted assembly uh, and providing more flexibility in product line changes. So to bring it all back, there's three things that I would like you to take away from today's session. Um, so when, when you look at the impact that 5D technology will have on trade finance and how it will be applied, um, I mean, the technology itself is, is transformational because it improves data throughput and the density of wireless services, and it improves the responsiveness of the applications for end users and machines, right? So that's just the technology itself. It's a general benefit. Uh, but by applying that benefit to trade finance, it will help reduce certain technology barriers that have existed and that have present, prevented us from um, digitizing parts of the chain in the past. Right, and these can be both functional challenges as well as challenges re related to cost. And finally, think of 5G as an ecosystem. Right? It's, it's, it has much wider applications, and that's actually the true value of 5G networks. Right? It will help things such as reduce trade finance risk, but it will also help logistics providers by helping them digitize their end-to-end -end chain. Right? It will help with port operations, will help in uh, manufacturing halls, right? It will allow people to um, produce more efficient. All these things together are the things that 5G enables. So with that, I, I, I thank you for your time. I'll hand back to Kuhn for the rest of the session. Oh, right. Thank you, Sender. Um, I remember when I, uh, you know, uh, about the competitiveness of uh, Singapore ports and how important it is for Singapore, uh, especially the speed and efficiency we can load and unload cargo. And I think the port was a, is a wonderful uh, idea of how 5G contributes to this whole world of increasing the velocity of handling uh, cargo. I mean, just for example, what, one of the things that occurred to me was, uh, you know, Singapore many years ago implemented an artificial intelligence system that makes sure that when we unload or load cargo from a ship, uh, we don't unbalance the ship because if we load too many of the containers on one side of the ship, the ship starts to tilt and that's not a good thing. Yes. And so whether you load or unload, you have to, be, you have to know uh, the weights of the different containers and which is the order you put in and put out. And all those information is so much, I mean, there's so many containers on ships nowadays, it's impossible for a human being to remember and to, 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 to really uh, even plan it well. So of course, computer systems come in and, and, and artificial intelligence with all the different rules that, that comes out finally with the best optimized solution to do things like that. But you know, a port is a very large facility. So you can't afford to have people running over the place with papers and stuff like that. So what happens is that a lot of the work is actually in a way automated or remote handling. So all those cranes you see in, in a PSA, they can be remotely uh, handled. Now for them to be remotely handled, uh, they are, there's a video camera that actually shows where the, the containers are. So they pick it at the right place and uh, place it at the right place. So. Uh, and of course, all the processing happens on the back end somewhere. The human being is sitting in a nice air conditioned room and remotely con you know, uh, managing all those cranes, which allows us to, sh to go from ship to ship very quickly without a human being having to climb up the, the, the crane, climb down the crane, go to another crane and so on and so forth, or have surplus manpower waiting for ships to arrive just to unload and load cargo. So now, uh, just by switching uh, in the back end, they can actually move to different ships, unload and load cargo. That, I mean, so all these things are just wonderful. And with 
something that is 5G allows us to provide lots and lots of information back and forth between the cranes, between the trucks, with the people sitting in the control rooms so that we can be a far more efficient port and increase our strength as a global uh, shipment hub. So thank you very much. I think that was a wonderful example. So now we are 